2001, the unthinkable happened. Word spread that a lioness in Kenya's Samboro Reserve had taken an antelope calf alive and was guarding it as her own. I couldn't believe my ears when I first heard about the adoption. I just thought, you know, that's absolute nonsense. Give it a few hours and, the, and that lioness will definitely eat the calf. Saba Douglas Hamilton is wildlife conservationist for the Save the Elephant Trust. She rushed to the reserve to see for herself the lioness and a baby oryx antelope in one of the oddest animal bonds ever seen. And all of a sudden, there was this completely unheard of situation on our hands of a predator that had adopted its prey. She was named Kamanyak, meaning the blessed one. And I think many people felt that this was, you know, had to be a message from God. Um, this was a miracle. This was, you know, the lion and the lamb laying down together. And Kamenyak really seemed to be infatuated by the baby. So they'd walk together and lie flop down under a tree and curl up next to each other. Um, it was very moving to watch. But what seemed like a touching story was actually a deadlock, which kept a solitary lion from hunting and a starving calf from its milk. Kamenyak had done the unimaginable. Instead of eating the baby oryx she had encountered, she adopted it. How Kamenyak got it, I can only speculate. But oryx calves are trained by their mothers and have a very strong instinct just to lie low in the grass and rely on their camouflage to protect them from predators. So it's likely that as its mother wandered off to feed, it was just hidden in a clump of grass. And she may have just stumbled across it or sniffed it out. But it was very hungry. We saw it trying to nibble on branches. At one point, it was even suckling on Kamenyak's ear. For days, the calf wandered looking for its herd while the lioness followed. Of course, every oryx it saw was potentially its mother and potentially food and life. So it would constantly try and rejoin adult oryx. Well, Kamenyak would allow it to go a certain distance away, but as soon as it started to move off with the oryx, she was then up on the warpath. And of course, the other oryx saw this lioness coming for them and would flee and the baby ran as much as it could, and then it just got exhausted and stopped, and she took it back again. What would drive a predator to defy her instincts and endanger her own life? We were just so flummoxed by this odd pairing of Kamenyak and the Oryx that I wrote to a lot of people. I, I wrote to all of the lion experts I could think of to try and get some kind of balanced view about what was happening. One of those experts was Craig Packer, of the Serengeti Lion Project. By email, Sarah shared with him the story of Kamenyak. She'd only recently separated, which is the way it sounds in the story. She still would be kind of reeling from the experience of no longer having the companionship of the rest of her pride. What we think happened was that she actually went through quite a traumatic loss, very sudden traumatic loss. And this clicked a switch in her head that that just sparked this obsessive compulsive behavior. So that when she came across this baby oryx, instead of seeing food, she saw baby. The problem with being a solitary lion is that you are all by yourself in a world surrounded by groups of lions. And they're gonna kill you. So if by misfortune, a female ends up all on her own, she lives a life of utter terror because she has to figure out how she's going to get from A to B without being spotted, how she's going to feed herself without being discovered in a vulnerable situation by her neighbors. I think that in her state of mind, she's, she's likely to be very frightened and very nervous. And I think that she found something that distracted and soothed her. Days became weeks. Kamenyak displayed little in the way of predatory tendencies towards the calf, and the pair showed no sign of separating. That we were so caught up in the bubble of this miracle that none of us really thought about the most obvious thing, which was that other predators would be lurking around. 
and you know, make a meal of the calf if they got the chance. We followed Kamenyak and the Oryx down to the river, and we were really pleased to see them going there because it was the first time that they'd drunk in several days. But of course, a river is an absolute haven for predators. It's where they lie in wait to ambush prey. And even if you have a lioness as a protector, it's no guarantee that you're safe. So when Kamenyak moved back up onto the bank and flopped down in the shade, she let the calf wander out of her sight for a few seconds. And in that instant, this huge male lion leapt out of the bushes and grabbed it. She was clearly terrified of the male lion, but she acted exactly as if she was a mother losing her cub. She couldn't leave the scene, and she it was almost like this anguish that you could feel in her desperate to try and save the calf, but unable to take on an adult male lion. When the oryx eventually died, the next day she went out immediately and she killed an impala and fed herself. So she was totally functional in terms of being a predator. It's just that she didn't equate food with the baby oryx. But her odd obsession was not over. Within a month, Kamenyak had adopted another oryx calf. After this first incident, Kamenyak actually adopted five more oryx calves, but none of them lasted as long as the first. Kamenyak's relationship with the calves she had adopted was not quite that of a friend or even a parent. I think she's more like a jailer uh, in that she's just controlling this animal. She's keeping it close by. It's something that's very harmless and inoffensive. But she obviously felt very strongly for it. I mean, in her mind, this was her baby. And I think if she'd had her own cubs and looked after them with that same kind of intensity, she probably would have starved them along with herself. In the wild, a bond between an antelope and a lion can't last, but it tells of the animal's ability to feel complex emotions. It was really charming to see them together. It was like something out of a fairy tale that you had the calf and the lioness walking side by side. And there was a real sort of intimacy between them. 